Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berish. Here we're holding Mishnah Berish Eli Kalaf and Amir Hashem. Today, we will be learning Daf Samach Zayin Amid Aleph. But first, we have to complete Samach Vav Amid Beis. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tefillin, and we pick up today on Samach Vav Amid Beis, four lines down, Simen Lamed Ches Sif Tes, where we have a very interesting tour from the Mitzvah of Tefillin. But this is something that we already mentioned yesterday. And the Lashon of the Mechaber over here is taken virtually verbatim straight out of the Rambam in Hilchus Tfilim. Says the Mechaber, Siftes, Mitztair, somebody who is suffering, Umi she'ein daitoy miyusheves alav unchayna. Somebody whose mind is not settled. It's very interesting, the Lashon of the Rambam. The Rambam is a Rishon. This is... <laughs> The words of Rishonim, Kozbeg Rebbe Zechitzat of Kodesh Lavrach, has said that all of the words of the Rishonim were written by Ruach HaKodesh, that were written with what he calls Hashpas HaKomus. That means that they, the Rishonim had, had Kavanus, Shemais, Hashem Echad Miyuchad, and and after, of course, they did all the Amelos, all the work on the Sugya, and they worked everything out, and they knew what they wanted to write. Even so, when they picked up the pen, they had in their minds Shema Yisaktoshim, and the pen wrote. So this is all written Baruch HaKadosh. And the Rambam's words are, Mi she'ein daitoy miyusheves alav, if his mind is not settled, u nechayna. Nechayna, in English, we usually tra- translate nechayn as proper. Somehow, daitoy miyusheves alav u nechayna. You know when we say in a legal document, somebody writes he's of, Sound mind. Miyusheves alav means settled. But nechayna is not just that his mind has to be settled. It's clear. It's of proper mind. Sound mind. So miyusheves ain daito miyusheves alav unechayna. Because he's suffering, is potter. He's potter from Tefillin. Why? Mipnei she'osr lahasiach daito mehem. Because like we've spoken about already so many times recently, when you wear tefillin, ki shem Hashem nikra alecha, you're, you're attaching your body, you're being medabek, your guf, with the shem Hashem. When you're wearing tefillin and you have shem Hashem nikra alecha, we, we've compared it to the kain gadol wearing the tzitz with the shem on the tzitz, you're not allowed to be mesiach das. Now, somebody who's ain daitoy miyusheves alav, somebody who's suffering, he's ill, he's not well, he's in pain, he's suffering. And because he's suffering, his mind is very unsettled, he's all maturif, and his mind is not clear, he's going to be misyachtas from tefillin. He's, he's not going to have that consciousness of wearing tefillin, and you're not allowed to be misyachtas from tefillin. And therefore, this pos- po- person... Is also is potter from wearing tefillin. Says the Mishnah is cut and but stire. When we say a person is suffering, what does that mean? Says the Mishnah Bruh, even because of excessive cold. He brings this down from the Magad of Ram. Somebody is 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 it's bitterly freezing, and this person is trembling with cold, and and he, he, I'm not talking about oh it's a little cold in here. I'm talking about somebody who's really he's in a bad spot. He's really suffering from the cold. His mind is going to be unsettled. Now, why should such, such, such a person be potter from tefillin? So the Mishnah Bura says right away, Va'ayin besamach. Well, in order to understand the Torah, you have to see what the Mechavah says next, which is that he explains it's because of the concept that you're not allowed to be Messiah Das. Aizkan Laman Aleph she'ein daitam Yusheves alav. Says the Chavetz Chaim something very, very important. Umayri b'shi'i efshaloi liyashiv daitoi. He brings down from the Bach, the Magad of Ram, the Gra, and other Achreinim. When we say that somebody who's daita is ain daita miyusheves alav is potter from tefillin, that's only if it's just impossible for him to calm himself down and settle his mind. Aval im efshalai, but if it is possible for him, chayiv liyashiv daita ulamichon. Certainly, this person is obligated to calm himself down. He has to sit down. He has to settle his mind in order so that he should be able to put on tefillin. When we say that there's a p'tur, that's only if it's impossible. So somebody can't go, ah, you know, I'm, I'm cold and uh, I'm a little, you know, out of sorts because I'm cold. I won't put on tefillin. Chas v'chalila. 
<laughs> you have a mitzvah say daraisa. Calm yourself down and put down, put on filling. This door is if you can't. If you can't, you can't. What did I tell you? Now we move on to Sif Yud, three lines off the bottom of the Shulchan Aruch here at Tzavach Vav Amid Beis. Says the Mechaber. Now, for this Sif, again, we have to put ourselves in the proper perspective. Let's remember, again, I keep on saying, May Iker Hadin, the Chiv to wear Tfilin is all day. Now we just don't have that perspective. So we have to get the proper perspective when we're learning these halachas, right? Let's remember, the Iker Chiv Menatayra to wear Tfilin is that you wear Tfilin all day. Now that means, when does the Chiv of Tfilin start? Mishayakir. That's when you could first put on Tfilin, right? When it's light enough outside, you could recognize your friend, Baruch Yitzhak and Amais. That's when you have the Chiv to wear Tfilin. So you wake up in the morning, as soon as Mishayakir comes, you have a chiv to put on tefillin. So now you put your tefillin on and you wear your tefillin the rest of the day, right? Now, we're coming from that perspective. So let's imagine somebody who got up before Mishayakir. Somebody got up 4 o'clock in the morning, it's still dark outside, it's not Mishayakir. He got up, washed Negevaser, and said Berches HaTorah, and he sat down to learn, and he's sitting and he's learning Daf Yaimi, and he's chazering Dirshu, and now suddenly it comes, it's Mishayakir. So now he has a chiv tefillin. Is he mechuyiv to be mafsik in his learning? He's being oisik b'tayra. Is he mechuyiv to be mafsik in his learning to go put on tefillin? That's what we're discussing here. Says the mechaber, sif yud. Hakoyre b'tayra, somebody who's sitting and learning tayra, potter me'anokas tefillin kal hayoyim. He has a p'tur. Really, when it comes to Mishayakir, he has a chiv to put on tefillin. But since this individual started learning before Mishayakir, so now when Mishayakir comes, he's in the middle of being Isaac B'mitzvah, right? So says the Mechaber, he's not mechuyiv to be mafsik in his learning to go put on tefillin. Zulas b'shas kriyashma utfila. However, when it comes time that he's going to say Kriyashma, and he's going to David Shemayin Esrei, at that point, he does have to put on Tefillin. Why? So this is like we alluded to yesterday in the Shita Sabachaber, because the Bechaber goes with the Rabbeinu Yaina, that Yobachoyev to be Bekedu Kabbalas Ol Malchus Shemayim Shlema, a person has to be Bekabal Ol Malchus Shemayim, and he has to do it Shlema, he has to do it the proper way, which equals Kriyashma, Tfila with tefillin. So yes, right now he doesn't have to be mafsik in his limud and go put on tefillin. But when it, it eventually, before you get to the Saif Zman Kriyashma, eventually he's going to have to be mafsik. He's going to have to put on tefillin, say Kriyashma and David Shemad Esrei with tefillin. Says the Mishtabura, Ice cut and Lamed Beis. Batayra. First, says the Mishtabura, when the Mechaber says that somebody is learning Taira, the Mechaber brings down Ishita, he brings this down from the Magen Avram, to qualify what this means. He says, Efshir, the Dafka B'tayr Shebiksav. He brings down to, from the Magen Avram that it could be that when the Mechaber says that when you're learning Torah, you don't have to be mafsik to put on Tefillin, that's only if you're doing Shtay Mikra Targum. That's if you're learning Torah Shebiksav, you're learning Chumash, then you don't have to be mafsik to go put on Tefillin. Avaloi b'isik b'gemara. You're sitting and you're learning daf yomi. No, then you do have to be mafsik. What should the chiluk be? Says the mishnah word the Torah yesh lo yomer shehi atzma ois because the tefillin are ois ukeshartem lo ois al yadacha ulo taytafa is beinei necha. Torah itself is considered an ois. Sheniz karbo yitzias mitzrayim in Torah shemiksav we have yitzias mitzrayim. Yitzias mitzrayim is ois ois umayvsim. So yitzias mitzrayim is an ois. Tarot Shabbat Sav talks about Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Tarot Shabbat Sav is an ois. So if you're being oisik in the ois of Tarot Shabbat Sav, you don't have to be mafsik to put on the ois of Tefillin. That's what he brings down in the Mishtabrura from the Magen Avram. But let's take a look in the Sharetzion ois cut in Yudches. Many Paiskim will tell you that oftentimes the Chavetz Chaim was not machria the halacha. He didn't give a conclusive ruling on the halacha in the Mishtabrura. Sometimes he does it in the Sharetzion. Let's see what he says here in the Sharetzion. Let's cut Yudches. 
Kane Kasev Amaganavram. He says this idea that maybe the Torah from Philin while learning Torah is only by Torah Shabbat So says the Maganavram. However, says the Sharetzia and developed Fertzach that they don't make this chilek. And they say that the Ptur is by Tersha Balpeh also, not only Tersha Vixav. Gam be beer agro mashma the lay sphere li chilek ze. And he says in the beer agro, it's also mashma, that the beer agro wasn't masked to such a chilek. There's no chilek between Tersha Vixav and Tersha Balpeh. The Ptur of the Mechaber goes even on Dafyoim. Elamisha Terasa Yum Nasai Patabachal Gavni. But, like we're going to see soon in the Mishnah Brura, this Ptur. Is only a get to somebody who's Tarasa Yom Nasai. Somebody who's Mamish, Elein Torah Togonach. That's all he does. His sole involvement is Torah. Tarasa Yom Nasai. Torah is his profession. Such a person has a Ptur from Tfilin while he's learning Torah, even if the Torah that he's learning is Torah Shabbat Peh, not Torah Shabbat But still remember the perspective of this Ptur. The whole perspective of this Ptur is back in the day when they wore tefillin all day. So you're wearing tefillin all day, you started learning Torah before this amount of tefillin, now there's a shayla that comes up, do I have to be mafsik in my limon Torah to go put on tefillin? Says the Mishnah, says the Mechaber, no you don't. You don't have to, you could keep on learning. How long could you keep on learning? Well, before Saif Svan Kriyashma, you're going to have to stop, because you got to say Kriyashma, you got to say Shema Nesra, and you got to do it while you're wearing tefillin. So eventually... You're going to be mafsik. Now for us, like the Arach HaShulchan says, this whole tour doesn't really start for us because we don't wear tefillin all day. So when is this Negea? We, we're not putting on tefillin Mishiach here because, unless we're davening for Sikin, but generally speaking, we're not putting on our tefillin Mishiach here. We're davening at the 8 o'clock minion. We're davening at the 7 o'clock minion. At the 7.30. And we're going to daven. We're going to put on our tefillin before davening. We're going to take our tefillin off after davening. So of course we're going to put on our tefillin. That's when we're davening. That's when we're saying Kriya Shema. That's when we're saying Shema Nesrei. We're going to put on our tefillin. So this whole tour, this whole discussion, in like, says the Yarech HaShulchan, isn't really germane to us. This whole discussion is back in the day when they wore tefillin all day. So then it was germane to have a discussion when the Zman of tefillin arrives in the morning. Do you have to be masik in your lima to put on tefillin? Weiter in the Mishnah Let's go to Ois Kat Lam and Gimel. Potter, the Machaber said, you're learning Torah. You're you're Potter. I Potter. Potter. Man, not just Tzilun Kalayot. Says the Mishnah Berurah. Tzana Loimar. What the Machaber wants to say is, what does he mean, Potter? She ain't Tzarich Livsayk Milimudai Kedei Lahanicham. When he says Potter, he doesn't mean that this person isn't going to wear Tzilun at all today. No, the Machaber himself says that by Zman Kriyshvan Zman Tfila. He's going to wear tefillin. So what does potter mean? Potter means he's exempt from having to be mafsik in his limud now when Mishayakar arrived to put on tefillin. Avol kaidem lozeh. But if, if he woke up in the morning after Mishayakar, so he already has a chiv of tefillin right now, he didn't start learning yet. He has to put on tefillin right now. He can't go pick up a Gemara and start learning and say, oh, I'm potter. no. You woke up, it is a, it's already a Zman of Tefillin, you have to go put on Tefillin. Gam Be'emza, not only that, says the Mishnah even according to the Mechaber, even back in the day. So this person got up before Mishayakir. He was learning Torah. The Mechaber says he's not with Chuyiv to be mafsik in his learning to go put on Tefillin now. Saif Zman Kriya is 945. Let's say at 9 o'clock, this person says, Okay, you know what? I've been learning since before Mishayakir. I just learned five hours Ritzifus. I started at four o'clock in the morning. Now it's nine o'clock. I want a break. Gam be'emtza im roitza If if he's going to make a hefsik now, he's learning. Olaniach. So now I'll put on tefillin. Gam ken rashoi v'yachal avarchalein. Now he's got to be mafsik and make a bracha and put on tefillin. Shafa pishapatu milahafsik bishvilan. Even though he's not mechuyiv to be mafsik in his learning to go put on tefillin, mikamakim came to roitza lahafsik milimudai. If he's ready to interrupt his learning, harichayv b'tefillin miyad shamafsik. As soon as he's mafsik in his learning, he has a chiv to put on tefillin. Ois kan lamedalad mehanachas tefillin. 
Gav, here the Ishtabura brings up an interesting point. He says, if you take a look at your day, a Reish Bem Vav Sif Yud Ches, in Hilchas Talmud Torah, it's Beferish Sif in Shulchan Aruch, that says, somebody who's being Isaac in Torah, if a mitzvah comes his way, and it's a mitzvah, she ef shalasai sa yideh acherim, it's not a mitzvah that somebody else could do. It's a mitzvah that you could only you could do. Well, putting on your tefillin is certainly only a mitzvah that you can do. So, beferish halach in your idea that if such a mitzvah comes your way while you're learning Torah, what are you mechuyiv to do? You mafsik in your learning. You do the mitzvah, and then you go back to your learning. So, over here, somebody's learning. A mitzvah came his way. She ef shalasis pdecher. Only he could put on his own tefillin. So he has to be mafsik and put on his tefillin. So why are we saying over here that he's not mechuyiv to be mafsik? Says the Mishnah Brura, "Va'afal gav shemechuyiv lahafsik mitamut Torah kedei lekaim kol a mitzvah shechiyuv on alav." Even though in your day it comes out very clear that you're mechuyiv to interrupt your learning to be to be mekayim any mitzvah that's incumbent upon you. That's a mitzvah sheiyev shalasis b'day acherim kedei isa biyaradei asim and reish ben vav sif yotches shani mitzvah tefillin. The mitzvah tefillin is different. Why? Sheikar tayalta hu l'tayra. You have to remember what the goal of tefillin is. Kidixiv, like it says in the pasuk, ulizikarain bene necha laman tihiat taras Hashem beficha. The whole goal of wearing tefillin, of putting on tefillin, is laman tihiat taras Hashem beficha. Shan hashem shabamoichi mishachu shavi kachaisai yukulam shubadim lefanecha. The whole concept of putting on tefillin is to be mishabed ourselves to avodas Hashem to Torah. So that you should be connected to the Teres Hashem. Well, you're learning Torah. If you're learning Torah, you're medubuk to the Teres Hashem. So that gives you an exemption. Do you have to be mafsik in Torah to put on tefillin? No, that would be counterproductive. The whole point of the tefillin is to bring you to Torah. If you're in Torah, the licked in Torah, you're not mechuyiv to be mafsik to put on to put on tefillin. Okay, in mekev and shekvar oisik b'tayr mikaidim ain't zarich l'vatel tayr b'shulze. Zulas b'shas kriya shema utfila. The exception says the mechaber is at the time that you're going to say kriya shema and shema nesrei kedei lekabel of omach shemayim. And I, I don't know why the Mishnah brought this up today and he didn't bring it up yesterday. Yesterday I had to go find this in the Rabbeinu Yoyna. I had to look at the Beis Yosef, find it in the Beis Yosef. Today the Mishnah brings it down. Says the Mishnah why is the Mechaber telling us that the, the great exception over here is during the time of Kriya Shema and Shema Nesrei? Because Lulas B'Shaz Kriya Shema Tvila K'day L'Kabal Olav Omar HaShemayim. The Gamen, furthermore, once you break in your learning to say you're not learning. So then you have the chiv of tefillin. The gra paskins in the beer agra. The dafka mishe tarasa umanasai. That this whole Torah only applies to somebody who er licked in Torah and only Torah. Mishe tarasa umanasai. Kigoyin Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechayi v'Chaverav, who their sole involvement was Torah. Avo Kigoyin Anu Tzvichin Anu Lahafsik After Tefillin. We all, we would always have to be mafsik in our learning to put on Tefillin. But again, says Yarech Hashulchan, this whole tour of Sif Yud really is not negated to us nowadays because we don't wear Tefillin all day. Okay. Moving on to Sif Yud Aleph, two lines off the bottom of Samach Vav on the base. Very interesting halacha. A person is not supposed to remove his tefillin in front of his Rebbe Muvak, his Rebbe that he learns Rav Chach Masai from. Ella rather, he should turn away a little bit from his Rebbe, because of the ema, the fear, the awe of his Rebbe. The Yachloit Shaloi Bafanov. And he should remove the tefillin when he's not directly in front of his Rebbe. What's at work over here? It says the Mishnah Baruch Himenu. We're not just talking about a, a, a Rebbe that you went to his shir. We're talking about a Rebbe that you learn most of your Chachmas Torah. You learned from this Rebbe, a Rebbe Muvak. What the Mechaber wants to say is, says the Mishnah Baruch and he bases this on a Taz. The zilzalhu, it's a pegia in the covet of the Rebbe, shemigala roishay b'fanov. 
in order to remove tefillin, you uncover your head, right? And you remove the tefillin. Says the Taz, it's a zilzal, it's a pegia in the covet of a Rebbe that you should go uncover your head in front of a Rebbe. You don't do that in front of a Rebbe. Well, if he's there, according to this, According to this, this Iser would stand in place even if your Rebbe already removed his tefillin. Why does the Mishnah say this? The Mishnah says this because there are those that say that the Iser of taking off your tefillin before your Rebbe means that as long as your Rebbe still has his tefillin on, you're supposed to have your tefillin on. You don't take your tefillin off before your Rebbe takes his tefillin off. Why? I've seen various reasons. One is that what is tefillin? Tefillin is part and parcel of Kabbalah's Olam Achus Shemayim. So when you're wearing tefillin, the oil of Shemayim is upon you, right? So kind of when you're wearing tefillin, you're showing that you're subservient to the Rabbi Nishalel. For you to take off your tefillin while your Rebbe is wearing his tefillin, now it kind of looks like your Rebbe has the oil of Shemayim upon him, and you don't. So, you you know, it's like your, your Rebbe is still Meshubit, but you're not Meshubit. What? What is that? that? That doesn't make any sense. So as long as the Rebbe is wearing the tefillin, the Talmud still has to wear the tefillin. Also, we're going to see right now in the Mishnah where another concept, and that is that there's an interesting angle where it could be, we know that there's a very stringent halacha that you're not allowed to be moira hara lifnei rabbi. You're not allowed to pask in a halacha in front of your rebbe. When, by you taking off your tefillin, there's a certain, a certain aspect of being moira hara. You're showing that it's time to take off tefillin. I'm saying that it is, higia hazman lach tefillin. But the rebbe didn't take off his tefillin. He's still wearing his tefillin. So how come you took off your tefillin? Now the Mishnah Brewer is about to say that that doesn't seem to be Negea unless you're removing tefillin at the end of the day close to Shkia. So then over there, everybody knows that the time to take off tefillin is now arriving. By you taking off your tefillin, it looks like you're pasketing that the time Higia has man to take off tefillin. But the Rebbe didn't take off his tefillin. So why are you taking off your tefillin? So you're being moira harab if they're rabbi. Let's see the inside. Says the Mishnah Bura. Again, I'm going to read from the beginning of Ice Cut and Lamed Vav. First, Ritzayin Elayim Ar Dezilzel Hu Shemagal Roisha Bifanov. It's a pegi in the covenant of the Rebbe that you should uncover your head in front of him. Well, if he's there following that rationale for the problem of taking off your tefillin in front of your Rebbe, then it would stand in place. I feel him quite call it rabbi tchila aser. Even if the Rebbe already took off his tefillin, it's still aser. Because the bottom line is you're uncovering your head in front of him. But if you turn your head away a little bit, so that you're careful not to uncover your head directly opposite the Rebbe, and the Mishnah says it appears that you could be Mekel. And if you're taking off your tefillin close to the end of the day, then you should be very careful not to take off your tefillin before the Rebbe takes off his tefillin. Because if you do, it looks like you're being Okay. Moving on to Sif Yud Bey's bottom line, Samach Vav Amid Bey's. Says the Mishnabura, Hayat Sarech Litfilin Umazaza. You find yourself in a position where you really have to give the cipher a lot of business. You need a Sefer Torah. I'm sorry, you need Tfilin, but you also need Mazuzas for your house. Hayat Sarech Litfilin Umazaza. Ve'en Yadai Maseges Liknoi Shnehem. And you don't have funding to purchase both. You don't have enough money, especially nowadays. Tefillin and mezuzahs have become outrageously expensive. So you need tefillin, you need mezuzahs, you don't have money for both. What do you do? Which one comes first? Says the, Mishter, says the Mechaber, tefillin kaidmim, tefillin come first. Says the Mishter, ice cotton, lamed zayin, on samed zayin, amed alaf. Tefillin kaidmim, tefillin come first. Why? Says the Mishter, dihi mitzvah shebegufai. Because tefillin is a mitzvah shebegufai, 
It's a mitzvah that you do with your guf, with your body, and a mitzvah shebegufai comes before a regular mitzvah. V'ayin and furthermore, we saw earlier, the kedushas tefillin l'maylum and kedushas mezuzah. We saw earlier that tefillin have a higher level of kedusha than mezuzah. Ukedela'el b'sibin l'amid be'is tefches. What was that talking about? We said over there that the hides that are going to that you're going to use to produce cloth for tefillin and for mezuzahs, they have to be mo'ubed l'shmoi. They have to be done l'shem kedushas ha-mitzvah. Now we said that if you have cloth that you made l'shem tefillin, you could use them for mezuzah. Why? Because mezuzah is a notch lower in kedusha. So if it had ibud l'shem tefillin, the kedusha of tefillin, the kedusha of mezuzah is included in that. But if it was mo'ubed l'shem mezuzah, then you can't use it for tefillin, because tefillin has a higher level of kedusha. However, says the Chavetz Chaim, by us, where we only wear tefillin by davening, so we only wear tefillin by zman kriyashma and zman shman esrei, so then, you, then, im efsher b'she'ela, if you could borrow tefillin to wear by zman kriyashma and by zman tefila, then mezuzah kedemis then you should spend the money on mezuzah. Because why not? The EF should be she'ela. You can't borrow a mezuzah. The mezuzah has to be on your door, right? So buy a mezuzah, put the mezuzahs up on the doors, and borrow tefillin until you could, every day, by davening, until you could raise the funds to be able to purchase your own tefillin. <clears throat> Finally, last sif over here in Sif and Lamed Ches, Sif Yud Gimel, Menunda u Metzaira Asurim Lahanyach Tefillin A Menunda, somebody who's in Cherim, and a mitzayra, somebody who is afflicted with tzaras, they are prohibited from putting on tefillin. Says the Mishnah Brayz, "Kan la mitches v'nuda u mitzayra ayin belechem chamudais v'shach biyardei sibit shid la medal siv beis or b'shari achrein the paiskim lahepich who paskid the opposite of this v'kasav repi begadim the anichu b'li bracha that a mitzayra and a menuda should put on tefillin without a bracha alva b'bira gram ashv lecher did svichel of arachkam kain from the bira gram it sounds like that they should put on tefillin and make a bracha." Okay, Simon Lamites. Mi heim hakshirim lichtoiv tfilin, who is kosher to write tfilin? The lichnois mayhem, and from whom can we buy tfilin? Uba yud siifim, and here we have ten siifim. Says the Machabi Sifalov, tfilin cheksavan eved, aisha aikatan. Tfilin that were written by an eved kanani, or a woman, or a minor, a cotton. I feel he gil even if it's a cotton that's already of the age of Higiyah Lechinuch, approximately six or seven years, where the father already has a chiv to train his son in Kiyama Mitzvahs. Oi Kuti, or tell that were written by a Kuti. What's a Kuti? Kutim were a group of people that were bought in the time of Shalmaneser. They were brought to Eretz Yisrael, they were Goyim, but they were Megayer. And the, question, the whole question was their gear and emissary gear. Was it a true gear or was it not a true gear? But in any case, they kind of kept mitzvahs like stukim, so they weren't really shemrei Torah or mitzvahs in the proper way. I am mummer, or tefillin that were written by a mummer lavoidus gilulim, a heretic who worships idols, a heretic who's over, over and over desara. I muser la anasin psulim, these tefillin are puzzle. Mishum diksevu kishartam u chesavtam kol she'ena b'kishira ayena maimin ba ayena b'ksiva. When the Torah writes u kishartam, you should tie the tefillin onto yourself u chesavtam, and you should write the tefillin. That makes a hekish. It draws a comparison between the tying on the kishira of the tefillin and the ksiva of the tefillin to tell me that anybody who doesn't have a chiv to put on tefillin. Like an Evid. An Evid Kanani has no Chiv to put on Tfilin. An Evid Kanani is Chayv Mitzvah, like an Isha. Tfilin in the Mitzvah Sesh has man Grama. An Evid is Potter. A Katan is Potter, right? So, such people, if they're Potter in the Kshira, they're not Kosher for the Ksiva. Oi, ain't a Maimon Ba. Or if somebody simply doesn't believe in the Mitzvah, right? So, then he's not Kosher to do the Ksiva. And we'll go into mo- a lot of this in more detail tomorrow. But right now, let's see the Mishnah is cut and olive. Tefillin. V'hu adin sefer tayra u mezuzah. These halachas apply not only to tefillin, but to sifre tayra and mezuzahs as well. Ois cut and beis oisha. If they're written by a woman. V'hu adin tumtum vandragin is tayin b'chlal safik isha. 
If you have a tumtum, somebody where the um, the the area of the erva is covered up, so we don't know if this person is a male or a female. Vandragonis, or somebody who has the simonim of both a male and a female, their tefillin, if they wrote tefillin, it would be possible. Dehem bechlal suffic isha, because either one of those are a suffic, maybe they're an isha. Suffic daraisa, the tefillin would be possible. Ice cut and gimel, I cut on, or if a minor wrote tefillin. We came on the afin and mikra. Since we're learning this out from a pasuk, this psal is not a psal drabanan. This is a psal daraisa that a cotton can't write tefillin. He's not. He doesn't have a true chiv of putting on tefillin. He's a cotton, so he's ain't a bikshira. He's ain't a bikshiva. Says the Mishnah Rura v'kaven the afin on mikra. Since we learn this out from a pasuk, be'inon sheyeh dafka gadol mamish. When we say that he has to be a gadol, it means that he has to really physically be an adult male. That means that he has already grown two pubic hairs since the time that he attained the age of 13. So he is physically an adult. But if we don't know if he has Shtay Cyrus, even if he's 13 years old, he's not allowed to write Tvilin. Unless we see that he filled out his beard. That's also a, a physical simon of godless. Um, his beard is mostly filled out. The hairs might be very, very short, right? Maybe he shaves, but we see that the hairs are there. So most of the hair of his beard is already filled out. That's a physical raya that he's a physical adult. Or you have a male who's already 36 years of age. That's considered Rav Shnoisav. Yemei Shnoisayim Shivim Shana. The, the Pasuk David HaMelech Tillim writes that the lifespan is considered 70 years. So somebody who's 36, he's already over Rav Shnoisav. He already passed most of his years. Such a person, even if we don't know if he brought Shtay Cyrus, he's definitely a Godel. Aisha Noldubay Simani Sris, or he has the Simonim of Nabach, um, uh, somebody, a male who's infertile. Then also he's kosher to write tefillin because he's considered an adult male. And we should object, and we should not just object, we should protest against the seifrim that allow young, young boys to write tefillin. And they don't really check if they're really physically adults or not. The Chavzchai brought down in the name of the Lavush. The Lavush wrote very strongly against the Seifrim that had apprentices. They had young apprentices and they allowed their young apprentices to write Tvilim. And then not only that, then they went ahead and they said that they wrote them because they wanted to get good money for them. And the Lavush said, well, they're kids and they have no kavanas and no anything. And if they're really ketanim, then the mamsh puzzle. Vayin bebir halach. Ice cotton dalit. The Mechaber said, even if the child is higiyah lechinach, he's puzzle lichtev tefillin. Be'emes, I feel a godoloi. The truth is, even if this person is a godol, meaning he's 13 years old, calls man shal yadin and chevish tei He's puzzled. Achle in Yidgadol, but when it comes to somebody who's over the age of 13, He says like this. He's saying, the Mechaber says that the cotton is puzzled, even if he's Higiel Edei Chinuch. Says the Chavetz Chaim, he's puzzled even if he's 13, unless you know that he was maybe Shtei Cyrus, like he said in the previous Mishnah Brura. He said, but there is a difference. If somebody wrote Tefillin when he was 13 and a half years old, so we know he was over the age of 13, but we don't know if he has Shtay Cyrus. Now we want to know are these Tefillin kosher or not. So we do a physical examination. If we see that he was maybe Shtay Cyrus, then the Tefillin are kosher. Even though we only did the examination now, we don't know if at the time that he wrote the Tefillin, he was maybe Shtay Cyrus, but... Since we know he was over the age of 13 when he wrote the Tvilin, and now we see that he has Shtay Cyrus, we assume that he had Shtay Cyrus when he wrote the Tvilin. But if he was younger than that, <clears throat> then if he was under the age of 13, 
and when he wrote the tefillin. And now we check later on and we see it, we see Eshtay Cyrus. So physically he's a godel. We don't care. The tefillin apostle. Mashiach um, bekotten dein amayil as Cyrus. I've gotten hey a kuti. One of the groups of people that the Makabra mentioned over here were the kutim. Says the Mishnah came tzarech leimar. The proper text in the Mechaber is Kuti. Others add the text Oivdei Kechavim, which are Enam Yehudim, non-Jews. Says the, the, the Mishnah Bura, no. Kain Tzarek Lamer, Kuti is what makes sense. Again, the Kutim were people who they had a Geras. We just have a suffix, was the Geras a real Geras or not a real Geras? But if there were Mamish Enam Yehudim, says the Chavetz Chaim, the Oivid Gululim Balavachi Puzzle. Einam Yehudim is certainly the Tefillin, our puzzle, Shein case of Lishma, because we know that Tefillin have to be written Lishma, and an Einam Yehudi is incapable of writing the Tefillin Lishma. We're going to stop over here. We'll go weiter on Sabah Zayin and base next time. Thank you so much for joining me for Leibon HaTari. The source of Leibon HaTari should be begging against Klai Yisrael. The Rav Shalom should send Yeshua as a first panasa to do him to all those in need. And we should be zaychet to see the BSK of Tzedek. Be well.